Yeah, I'm really glad you brought up the AI piece because I was I was talking about this. There's a movie that got um, an Academy Award nomination this year, and it was about a woman who's a Korean American woman who funneled her own autobiography into her film, which then went on to become an Oscar nominee. But if you look at the box office receipts, it was $12 million to make this movie. It ended up making $40 million at the box office. Now that personal story, which is hers and hers only, cannot be generated by any AI tool. I think some of the most amazing stories are still gonna come from people. And she was able to funnel that into a very smart thing, find financiers and be able to produce, you know, obviously a very bar big margin on that. So I think that that brand of storytelling that is unique to you and only you is never, ever going to be able to be replaced. Now, that being said, you can take what's up here and turn them into cheat sheets. You can turn them into infographics. You can turn them into case studies. You can talk about client transformations. I think you can talk about, uh, like I said, top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel pan of, of content. And you can build community around that thing because people are going to value match for what you're talking about, what you're saying. But I always say this, that when you're doing storytelling, and again, this is not something that AI can replicate, you need to create an experience if you're going to persuade someone or influence someone. And how do you create an experience? It's by doing really descriptive storytelling. What did you hear? What did you smell? What did you taste? What did you feel in that moment? Last night I was at FIT, the big fashion school here in New York, and the um, speakers were talking about perfume. And even with perfume, most of the time you're going to have to do really compelling storytelling because people aren't going to be able to smell your perfume, not just yet. AI hasn't gotten there yet, but they have to really paint this picture so you're almost salivating, smelling the thing because of the descriptiveness of the storytelling that you're doing. And I think that if you have mastered the art of doing that, you have the ability to persuade or influence anybody's buying decision because money is emotional. Buying is emotional. And I think we forget that that's the trigger. And the quickest way for you to map to that conversion is by doing really descriptive storytelling. It's an art and a science. It, it, some people really struggle with it. I have a chef that I'm working with who has been sitting on a supper club concept for three years. I said, at the end of my coaching engagement with you, you're not only going to work on storytelling, but you are going to host your first supper club this Saturday, which he is. But he, his superpower is food. And I have to really train him to talk about his food to the point that I'm salivating. I'm tasting it even before I've tasted it. Amazing. Um, Ellen and Adrian, can I just bring you back in both of you there for a minute and then we'll open up for any questions. So please, it's a, not a huge group this evening. So we'll just ask people to put their hands up and take their mics off if you want to ask any questions. Um, just coming back to that whole piece of like, I suppose, understanding the conversion and the funnel and stuff like that. Could, could, would either of you like to contribute to, to any of that? Because we didn't really get to talk about that earlier in the session. Um, Ellen, do you want to start? 